All right, so welcome for our second night hacking event at the JFall Conference. We are going to do some bike code hacking with Case. How are you doing, Case? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Um, this is a pretty lively conference, and I already gave my talk, so I'm all relaxed and done. Well, I'm not. I'm still due, and I have to decide the format of my talk still. So uh, I like improvising, but... Uh, you, you have plenty of time. You're fine. All right, so before we get started with our, our bytecode hacking, I wanted to play a quick video clip from the um, conference here. Um, the NLJEC puts on the conference, and they've got some, some pretty cool intro videos they used at the keynote, so Bert gave me a copy of it. So, without further ado... All right, cool. So um, that's about the conference, but we're gonna we're gonna show some cool bytecode hacking. So for, for, before we get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and why why would anyone want to hack Java bytecodes? Um, well, the most important thing to know about Java bytecode is you, you don't need to hack it. I mean, it just, it's uh, something that I like to do is to open the hood on the things that I use, the gadgets, uh, my car, everything. I like to tinker with it, and I think that's really good exercise to do. So, um, at some point, I started doing some compiler building. I was working on some uh, small languages, and as an exercise, I added concurrency to the popular brainfuck language. And uh, for that, I needed bytecode engineering because it, I couldn't express what I wanted to express. I couldn't express it in Java, um, which is a good thing, right? Java protects us from crazy stuff, and um, but I needed more than what Java could give me at the time. Um, I, can I can show you the, the code that I needed. Um, yeah, yeah, and I'll switch to your desktop and show a little bit of what you have going on. All right, I'll make it slightly bigger if that works. Yep. Um, so here's a, a very short piece of uh, C++. This is actually legal C++. Um, if you look carefully, what you can see is that we have a switch case and we've got an if statement. And contrary to what Java allows us to do, these two are actually interleaved or intertwined. They're not neatly nested as Java would force us to do. So here we have some code that I can express in C++, will compile and will run. And in Java, um, the compiler just won't let us. So here's a, a use case for you. If you are building concurrency and you don't want to use threads, want to use con continuations, do it by hand, well, I'm afraid this is the stuff that you need. Hey, Jim, watch out for the camera above your head. <laughs> okay. Sorry. All right, that's okay. So this got me started with uh, the BCL library. Sorry, what was that? J Jim was wondering if he got a glamour shot or not. Uh, okay. <laughs> we'll find that back. So from there, you know, I, I, I haven't used it much, to be honest. I, this is the main reason I got it started. And then at some point, I thought, hey, let's do a presentation on this. Because one of the things I notice in Java land, uh, you notice here on the floor, when you talk to the, even the recruiters, they talk about frameworks. You know, and if a recruiter starts talking about frameworks, there's something really odd. So what I see is that there's a, a large movement towards lots of frameworks. And uh, while it has a lot of plus sides and a lot of good uh, things it brings us, it also takes us away from the actual Java, the actual underlying language and what happens there. Mm -hmm. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a presentation on the subject of the lowest level in Java that you can have? And hence, I made my presentation on Java bytecode hacking. Cool. Now, I've done a little bit of bytecode hacking in my past as well, but that was a long way back before we had good um, 
frameworks <laughs> for data binding and um, doing like object database type mappings. Um, but I think it's quite a useful skill for any Java programmer to understand what's actually happening under the covers and then have some tools they can use to, to hack. That, but that's my point, the understanding part. You don't have to use it in your daily life, but you have to understand how it works, what it really is that you're working with. All right, so you're going to show us something, right? Um, yeah, I can do, I can do a, a short piece of the talk, maybe. Uh, show you what, what I've uh, done in the talk. I'll just pick out a few slides. I mean, it's, um, I'm not going to do the talk here, right? You can watch it later. Yep. Uh, Here's uh, essentially the, the gist of the talk, what I want to do. If you look at the screen, you can see there I've drawn a picture of the JVM. And what I've done is I've drawn in a transformer, highlighted it to show that this is something that we'll be making during the talk. So during the talk, we will put something in the JVM that allows us to transform Java bytecode as it comes from disk. And before it goes into the actual class loader and, and objects are made of it, we can transform it, add stuff to it, remove stuff. I think you may be starting a new trend here. You know that funky, um, you know, newfangled XML and different programming styles? I think um, hex coding <laughs> might start becoming fashionable. <laughs> I think it would be useful because it would force people to understand a lot more about what they're doing. <laughs> there should be a time like that, yes. Um, so I'm going to also present the uh, different frameworks I see for doing, well, you know, uh, it's a cross between aspect-oriented programming and, and bytecode hacking. Because really, you don't want to write your whole application or what, what you have to do in Java bytecode. You just want to install a few hooks that actually hook into your main application. And for this, this is a slide I stole uh, from the internet. The, the, the link is actually invisible on, on your, the screen for you guys. Oh, you got it there. So this is a slide from someone else who gave a presentation on bytecode byte engineering. Um, All right, so I think of those frameworks, uh, I've played with all of them except, I don't think I play with JavaSyst much. I think that's the newest one of the bunch, right? Well, JavaSyst, I think, is a very interesting one because it, it allows you to do Java inside Java. And while that it, it gets a bit mind-boggling at times, it is actually, um, you know, the, the easiest way into bytecode engineering. So I, li I like it very much for the idea. Um, what, what, which ones do you like the most and why? I mean, the, these are all different. Yeah, so I, I mostly hate getting down with ASM and BCL because it's a pain in the ass. Yes. CGLib, you can do kind of cool stuff in, and I find the aspect-oriented programming doesn't let me do enough. Usually, if I'm doing bytecode hacking, I'm doing an odd use case. I'm not just adding like log methods around um, method handles or something. So, right. Well, that's pretty much covered by Spring nowadays, anyway. I mean, yeah. you don't need anything for that. Uh, that's the only addition I made to this particular slide. Um, so, f for the really odd things, yeah. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to use at least Java Sys. That's probably the lowest level, and even go down from there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yes, the pain in the ass is there. Um, it's uh, one of the slides. I don't know where it, where it sits. Oh wait. So this is the the closing slide I'll use, and this uh, refers back to uh, your point about BCL and ASM. Cool. So, do you have any um, examples of stuff which you've you've hacked on or modified or or kind of personal examples of things you've done recently with bytecode hacking? Well, the, the most important one was I was working at a customer site and we had the problem that uh, database connection transactions were being closed by one of the myriad number of frameworks they were using. And um, they used essentially anything on the planet they used for persistency. So what we couldn't figure out from the code anywhere where these database connections were being closed. So that's actually the use case I also use for uh, this presentation, is that um, I made a very, very hackish tool uh, that, uh, that an trip wire that essentially allows you to instrument an individual method with uh, a stack dump. So if that method is ever called, 
it results in a stack dump and you can see who closed your database connection. Okay, so as a debugging aid for a fairly complex project with lots of frameworks. <laughs> yes, yes, and trying to figure out which one of those was um, closing the connection. And it's actually, I mean, if you look at the code, it's, it's fairly simple. Um, and it's not something you would run in production for a long time, but, you know, it, it did the job. And that was uh, the important part. Cool. Have you ever tried um, bytecode hacking on code generated by a JVM language like Groovy or Scala or your choice of? No, I've, I've actually not. No. I, uh, I tend to stick with the languages as they are. Um, so, or build my own. I, I reverse decompiled some Scala and that was enlightening. <laughs> what, was the, what, what did you get out of that though? I mean, what was the biggest uh, surprise there for you? Um, so in the, in the project I was creating a, a DSL for, well, for JavaFX, the ScalaFX DSL. And the reason I was in the bytecode decompiling stuff and figuring out how it worked, because I was trying to figure out if the, um, the unboxing optimizations I put in to avoid boxing and unboxing were actually working. Um, so the bytecode told me, you know, and I checked and initially it wasn't working. And then I added in the, um, the proper annotations and type support so it could do primitive um, collections of things. And then I saw that the unboxing and boxing wasn't happening anymore, which was good. But to, to get to the code, I had to go through so many like generated classes and levels of indirection and different stuff, which, which Scala had put out there, probably um, partially due to the way I designed my DSL, but at the same time to get the syntactic look I was wanting, I couldn't really change it. Right. Um, but that code was really gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> You're really happy that was generated rather than written by you. Yeah, well, yeah, perhaps. I, I was less happy it was generated when I saw what was generated. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that, That's also, I mean, bringing it back to framework, that's also what I many times I feel with frameworks. People just generate stuff and think, oh, it must be good because the framework is good. And then, you know, they call me for performance problems and, well, they have a a skill problem rather, or an interest problem, not so much a performance problem. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so let's see if there are any questions. If you're watching on the live stream, um, the chat window is open at nighthacking.com, so type in a question to chat, and I'll ask Case. And um, I'm going to pick on Jim here. Hey, Jim, any questions for, for Case? We're, we've entered the interactive part here. Here's the microphone. So what, in, so what in your understanding is the origin of Cafe Babe, the first, the first four hex byte codes? C-A-F-E-B-A-B-E -E -E on your slide. Do you remember that? Yeah, I know. So what's the, what's the origin of that? Uh, no, I don't know. Honestly, I, I see it and I can take a wild guess, but... All right, what's the origin of that, you know? Um, I used to know. <laughs> Here, Jim, why don't you do this? Well, folk folklore has it, folklore has it that, that the original developers of Java, like James Gosling, Andrew Von Hoff, uh, some others, were, um, uh, there, was a, there was a coffee shop nearby so they used to like to go to that coffee shop, which is one reason they called it Java. But there was a, a lady at that coffee shop. And so they just, uh, I guess they kind of liked her. And so they, they called her Cafe Babe. And, um, and so, that, so the first, uh, what, uh, four bytes of the byte code, you know, like any, any EXEs, right, are start with MZ, right? For for some for somebody you know the initials that 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 came up with that particular standard the exe standard, same thing with uh, Java bytecode Cafe Babe. So now now a serious question. Um, so how do you explain your and maybe you covered this already, but to what do you attribute your passion for 
you know, twiddling byte codes and things like that. I mean, you really like to get your hands dirty, but what's the, what's the origin of that passion? Why, do you, why are you so passionate about that? Well, that's actually an easy question to answer because the, the, the basis of this is all curiosity. You know, I see something and it works. Why does it work? I, um, I can open it up, I can open it, that up, I can open that up, like you did with your DSL. Uh, I just want to know what's under the hood and just keep digging uh, until I really understand. Um, what makes me passionate about that is that um, I find it uh, severely lacking in many people. I work with a lot of people and what I, what I see when I hire people, when I interview people, I look for that same curiosity for that passion and there's so many people out there who are essentially doing Java for a day job uh, with all respect but you know uh, the really good ones they are the ones that have that drive to dig and to understand things that everybody else takes for granted so I tried to be that one all right thanks very much for the questions Jim and um, appreciate the interview case all right thank you for your time so you can watch more of the videos at nighthacking.com. And to close out, I'm going to pop up the NLJUG logo um, since we're broadcasting live from the JFall conference. So enjoy the short video clip.